and grow YouTube show. One question I had for you, we talked two years ago, something that really moved me was talking about your experience of garden gnomes. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, how's Nomi doing? If you could kind of fill listeners in who maybe not didn't hear that story and have the, how, how do you feel? Has there been progress over the last two years into the present in inclusivity, um, in, in the gardening space? Yeah, so um, Jerome is the the gnome. Jerome name. the garden gnome. Am I calling Jerome him gnome? Oopsies. Okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Everybody knows now. We are we're all caught up. Jerome the gnome is uh, a no a black gnome that I found in Target, uh, and it, I feel like when I found Jerome, that was like the last time I looked. But generally, when the spring inventory is getting swapped in, the gnomes are put out and because of the scarcity of uh the black gnome you got to get in there quick Mm -hmm. (laughs) and get it and so I you know I wanted to have a garden accessory that looked like me yeah (laughs) you know if if I was a white person then I wouldn't have any issue with finding you know the fairies and all that stuff and so um I got Jerome whatever year I got him, it was a couple of years ago, you know, life has been lifing, so it's hard to keep up. Mm-hmm. But Jerome is currently uh, also in the care of Ashley, uh, my plant sitter, and Jerome is doing well. And um, as far as the diversity in the plant space goes, oh my God. So I'm like bursting with excitement because I'm excited to just indicate or not indicate, but talk about the fact that our beloved Plant Queen, who was also a guest on Bloom and Grow. Yes, Christopher. Has recently announced that uh, the You Grow Girl. Yes, book, his book, their book. That's coming out. Mm-hmm. And um, that brings me so much joy because I'm like, yes, another botanical uh, book offering. Um, I feel like, did you interview Baronda Montgomery? Oh my gosh, yes. I'm in love okay, with her. Okay, gosh, I got to go listen to that. So We had a beautiful conversation, the author of Lessons from Plants. Of course, so that book is out there. So, you know, when I'm thinking about what the representation and everything is looking like, my first, the first place that I look is in the media. Mm-hmm. But I am, I've also become aware of so many other, um, oh, and by the way, I got to get Veranda on my show. Here's a fun, quick little story. So I remember getting ready to go and put out the episode that I assumed that I recorded with Veranda. I was looking through my files and I was like, Veranda, I don't see. And then I realized I, it's like we talked and I know we talked on Instagram live, but I didn't realize that we didn't record. Oh my gosh. Every (laughs) podcaster's nightmare. (laughs) I've totally been there before. That's the only time it's ever happened. (laughs) And I was just looking for it and and we didn't get a chance to actually schedule it just because of the way that life was happening. But um, yeah, that was an interesting one, but yeah. So, Mm -hmm. Hey Miranda, but uh, you know, of course she has her book lessons uh, from my plants. I don't want to say it wrong, but you know, lessons from plants. Yes. Lessons from plants and beautiful book. But so media wise, there is that representation that is, you know, more and more uh, books are coming out. And of course, uh, I also look to social media and I see that the plant community, the black plant community, my soil cousins, we are definitely in bloom. Um, Two years is enough time to be able to tell like who is building their platform in a way that is there. It's like you, you're the, when the plants come into your life, and you get into this space where you're discussing them, especially growing into a plant fluencer, um, you recognize that there are opportunities for you to make it a, make a living for yourself, whether Mm -hmm. it starts with the side hustle and turns into like this full-blown thing like you and I, or however you go about it, making a few extra dollars or something. But um, I'm just thinking about just right off the top of my head is um, Nia, and she lives um, not too far from you. She's in the Bronx 
and the bloom she, journey um, shout out yeah, the bloom journey she's on my um, list of uh bucket list guests for this year for bloom and grow so y'all will hear from her very yeah. soon and i had the pleasure of uh spending some time with her when i made it up to the bronx and i celebrated my two-year anniversary of black in the garden she was very instrumental in organizing that so i want to shout out to her but in just seeing what she's done with her platform and knowing her and, and you know, being a, a good friend of hers, I also understand that she's, you know, just trying to find her way and figure out like, hmm, how can I turn this into something where I get to, you know, make it a, make a living for myself. So um, I guess I'd say that to say that in just discussing currently what's happening with Black people in in horticulture and in the horticultural space and the representation and everything, it's opening up opportunities for us mm -hmm. to get access to the freedom that you have when you are able to have control over your life as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that for us and in, in those opportunities, you know, specifically around like growing in influencership and turning that into something like, that's what happened with Plant Queen. Is it not? Absolutely. Do, 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 do